DJ Burton Beer Review. Well, it's time to drink a collab beer. Something where a brewery, one, two, or more, come together and make a special beer. And who is collaborating on this beer today? Well, we've got a beer which is a collaboration between Jester King out of Texas, Crooked Stave out of Colorado, and Brasilie Trois Dames, which is the creator of this version, out of St. Croix, Switzerland. That's right. So, we've got, like, uh, different sides of the country in the USA and the other side of the world. Kind of, sort of. Anyway, Europe. We don't call that the other side of the world. Other side of the pond, anyway. Beer. So, what's the beer called that they've created? It's called Cerveza Sin Frontera, which means beer without limits or beer without a frontier. Why is that? Because this collab beer, what they did is they brewed the same base beer, they use the same Spanish sherry casks, which on the front it says um, it, that it's been matured in Barriles de Jerez. Jerez is what they call sherry in Spanish. Mm -hmm. and, and Spain is one of the originators of sherry. And what they do after that is, starting from the same base beer, they use Brett, and then they also use their own unique wild yeast strain in each one of the breweries, and then mature the beer in said sherry casks or Barriles de Jerez. So, they got a different result out of each and every single one of these. Now, the uh, one from Jester King came in at, oh, I think it was like 6.4% ABV. Then the one from Crooked Stave came in at 5.4% ABV. This one from, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Brasserie Trois Dames came in at 5.69% ABV. So, as you know, the IBUs on, I guess, sort of, kind of sour or tart ales like this can range anywhere from like 20 all the way up to 50 IBUs, though they're usually not detectable and they're generally, you know, in that lower range. It's just a nature of the beast and it depends what the base beer is, how much hops, whatever. But generally, you know, hop bitterness and IBUs of that are not really a perceptible thing because of the presence of the wild yeast, Brettanomyces, and then in this case, they've got wood aging in a sherry cask. So. I'm ready to cr crack into this bad boy. I've been looking for something unique to drink for a little while. I popped into one of my bottle shops that does a lot of European stuff, and this happens to be there. I got no chance unless I trade to get Jester King or Crooked Stave here in Maryland. So let's dive in and see what's up with Cerveza Sin Frontera, the Swiss version from Brasserie Trois Dames. So nice hiss off the top. Damn, I can smell the funk and the vine of sherry blasting off the top of this bad boy as the cannon smoke's coming out. Damn, yeah, I got a nice snifter here. I think that's going to be an appropriate um, glass for that. Let's see if we can get any head on this at all. Maybe not. Sometimes these Brett beers and wild beers, you don't get a whole lot of head, even though this beer is bottle conditioned from what I read. But, you know, hey, well, we got a little bit of soap sudsy kind of head. Looks like we we'll put a little bit of Dawn or dishwashing detergent in the water, and that's the suds we got. But it, it's there. Anyways, let's see what else is up with the appearance. It's a hazy, burnt orange color with some really faint, like, garnet in there, making it appear more like brown like or that burnt orange. Kind of like um, the first stage of, like, you know, making, if you ever made candy sugar for when you, you know, liquid candy sugar for when you brew. It's kind of like one of those early stages, you know, like the, the light, the like D10 or whatever they call it, candy sugar. But, you know what, even though that head is soap suzzy, it's lasting the whole time I'm flapping my gums when I swirl it. Yeah, actually, you know what, we might get some glass lacing off this bad boy. Even though it's sudsy, it's already lacing up on the inside. And there's actually a little bit of, like, film or coating. I don't know if that's alcohol legs or just bunk out the bottle from the bread and the wild yeast. But take a look at that, guys. Really pretty looking beer. That's what I like my beers to look like. Dirty. Let's see what's up with the aroma department. Right up front, you get a big vinous blast. Like, a, like grape skin, maybe cherry skin. After that, that Brett Funk kind of barnyard horse blanket thing is going on there. There's a grassiness in this beer. And then the sherry and the tannins from the oak are coming in the background with a bit of vanilla. There's a lot of layers of aroma to this beer. And the more it opens up and the more I sit here talking, it's not really cold. I think I got this beer about like 50 to 52 degrees, somewhere in that range, which I, just, which I think is about right for this kind of beer. But as you smell it, that wood aging, the oak, the tannins, and the sherry aroma itself is building that spirit sherry aroma. With all that is trumped by the wild yeast and the Brett smell. It's not like a super funky beer. This reminds me of, you know, kind of maybe like Duchess de Bourgogne, that kind of funk and tartness that I'm smelling in here. 
and maybe a little bit of like if you have, have ever had an aged Orval, when the Brett sort of like starts taking that beer over and it becomes more prominent, that's what this beer is reminding me of. Really nice smelling beer. It doesn't have that really like big acidic or like balsamic vinegar thing, but there's a like a sweet tone in the back as well. I'm ready to dive in, guys. Cheers. Or I guess since this is possibly toi dame, santé. Mmm, nice. Much as I thought, like Duchess de Bourgogne is not like super big and tart. You know that Flanders red thing going on. This has got a nice tartness, balanced out by sweetness, and there's a there's almost like a, a bready crackery thing in some ways going on here. But in the background, I'm tasting like um, a bit of vanilla and wood tannins mixed with a bit of cherry skin. Big vinous note as you take another drink. That like vinous white wine or white grape skin is right up in the front. In the middle, there's that sort of crackery bready, almost tastes like hunt, bread with honey on it, like or like toast with honey on it. And then in the back, you're getting those tannic notes from the wood, a bit of vanilla. Hmm. It's, it's an interesting beer. These these wild beers, you know, they all take on a you know life of their own. And when you drink them, the layers like unfold slowly as you taste them. Man, nice beer. It's tart. It's not sour. It's not super funky. I do get the sense drinking this. If you cellar this too long. It would be super dry because it has a fairly dry finish on it now. It's actually a really clean finish. The taste doesn't like really build up and like and like dominate your taste buds. You're basically left with like a like a sherry and like vanilla taste and the with a real real faint tartness. When you drink it, the tartness is there, but as as you swallow it down and your palate you know is cleansed off after after you swallow it down. It, it kind of goes away. It's a really cool beer. Very easy to drink. An easy drinking wild, you know, or farmhouse sort of style ale, whatever the hell you want to call this. But I believe, and I'm, I'm pretty much sure I'm right, that this has been brewed once. And I haven't had the other variants. What would be cool is if you could do a side by side of each one of the variants and see how the, uh, you know, the, you know, local wild yeast strain took this one over or that one and see how it tasted. But you know what? Real tasty beer, um, and uh, for a tart beer or, you know, a wild ale or Brett beer, whatever the hell you want to call it, it's it's very, very easy drinking, and the alcohol is completely hidden, but it's, you know, 5.69. Yeah. You know, anyway, so, I'm flapping my gums. <laughs> Not a surprise. So, <sighs> let's talk about grades on this beer. So, I have the grades from all three of these, you know, for as much as I can get, and let's talk about the Jester King and the Crooked State first. Jester King... Rate Beer gives it a 94, and Beer Advocate gives Jester King an 88. Okay, yeah, an A to a high B+. Plus. The Crooked Stave, on Rate Beer, they're giving it a 95, and on Beer Advocate, they had no grade on the Crooked Stave variant. Now, for this beer, the Possibly Trois Dame, Rate Beer gives it a 30. What the fuck? 30? 30? Really? I, 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 yeah, you know what Rate Beer gets. They get the fuck off from me. That's the typical bullshit. And beers that are identical, the yeast strain don't do that much. I mean, when you got the same base beer, same, same sherry cast, Brett, and then you're just you're kicking your wild yeast too. Yeah, you got the little bit of alcohol variants, but uh, I'm not gonna go. And they, they just piss me off now. And then uh, Beer Advocate does not have a grade for the Prince uh, Trois Dames variant of the Cerveza Sin Frontera. So what's DJ's grade for this? I'm gonna give this beer a high A minus. I'm gonna give it a 93. Very well made, super easy to drink. I don't know how well it would sell her. I'm drinking it now, so we're not gonna. I'm not gonna find out. But really tasty beer. I would drink it again, and it's maybe a good sort of in at least this variant. I think almost like a an ent good entry level beer in some ways because it's not super aggressive. And I think of Duchess de Bourgogne in that way too. And I really dig that beer. Saying it's entry level. Um, isn't a knock against it it's just that it's not like super aggressively flavored and i think more palace besides just like super experienced sour or tart beer drinkers um would be able to approach this beer and and enjoy it so 
So that's DJ Brewtube. If you've had this beer, let me know what you think. I don't know if anyone's had this that I've seen on the internet or even hardly read because there's hardly even any reviews at all of it. But if you've had it, let me know what you think because I like the quid pro quo and the back and forth. If you've had the Corkett Save or Jester King variant, let me know what you think of that too because they're all cousins now, aren't they? So to the next DJ Brewtube, if you could also remember to think locally, drink locally, and support the craft beer movement because that along with copious amounts of Cerveza Sin Frontera puts my happy face on. So till the next time we sit down, and share a beer. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, smash that like button, and have a bunch of seen cerveza sin frontera drinking love coming for me. And you know what else I got for you? Are you ready for it? That's right, a big ass, a big giant.